Welcome to investigation 1.2. This is reading graphs and tables. So this is our second investigations in frogs, fleas, and painted cubes, and we're just starting into the concept of quadratic functions, equations, graphs, tables. It's exciting. Our focus question. How does the maximum area of rectangles with a fixed perimeter appear in a graph or table? So we are looking for essentially how our quadratic Quadratic, sorry, equations displayed in graphs and tables. So that's what we're looking at when we look for max area. Um, so our words worth knowing. First word worth knowing is quadratic function. Quadratic function is a function. So it's essentially if I put in an x value, I'll only get one y value. So it's a function between independent and dependent variables, just like a linear e function or an inverse function or an exponential function. We've been talking about those. So it's a function between independent and dependent variables, and the differences will increase by a constant amount. The graphs will have a U-shape or an upside-down U-shape. So let's see what we mean by this differences will increase by a constant amount. Here is our x and y table for this situation. We have x and y. If I look at x, we have an increase of 1, an increase of 1, an increase of 1, and so on. If we look at our y, we have an increase of 5, and then an increase of 3, an increase of 1 and then we start decreasing by that same sort of pattern. What's interesting about this, and we'll get into this more in the future, the differences between each of these numbers, if we notice, is a constant decrease of 2. We're subtracting 2 each and every time. So this is what's called a second difference and we'll talk about this more I believe in investigation two or three. So this is we're going to be talking about the second difference. So if we can see there we have that constant difference happening um, a little ways beyond our table but there is a pattern we see plus five plus three plus one now it's going backwards and it's kind of mirroring itself. So we want to see that sort of mirror image and so they are also characterized by that U-shape. So parabola, that is that U-shape. That is the name of what that U-shape is. So a parabola is um, an upside down U or um, a upside down U or a right side up U, but it has a minimum point or a maximum point. And there is a point in these if they were drawn well where you would see everything sort of repeating and reflecting over a line of symmetry. So there is a point where everything becomes a mirror image. So that's the definition of a parabola. So get those in your words worth knowing if you need to pause the video. Now let's talk. We have a graph here, rectangles with a fixed perimeter. It's, it's describing length versus area. And we need to describe the shape of the graph and any special features that we see. So I see a, a U shape. It's upside down. So it's kind of like a hill. I'll say that it also looks like a hill. That's kind of cool. It has a some defining features, some special features. It clearly has a maximum where it doesn't go any higher. And it also crosses, it looks like, the x-axis at special points. So it crosses twice, two times, on the x-axis. So those are some defining characteristics that we can look at for this particular um, graph. So I'm going to erase just a little bit so I can actually see my graph because now I have to answer questions about it. What is the greatest possible area for a rectangle with this perimeter? So 
So for this situation, I'm looking at that maximum value. And I have to estimate it a little bit. So I'm going to be taking this information and I'm going to be moving over to my y-axis and seeing where it about hits. Now if I look at that, it's a little above um, my 55 line. So I'm going to say my greatest possible area is maybe 56 centimeters. So there's my greatest possible area. I have to estimate. I can't be super accurate with it. I have to estimate it. So that's just going to be how it is. And then it says what area of a rectangle what is the area of the rectangle whose length is 3 centimeters and whose length is 12 centimeters? So looking at this, I can now look at my length side of things, my x-axis, and look for my 3 centimeter mark, and I'm going to be going up and estimating an amount, and I'm also going to do the same thing for the 12 centimeter mark and estimating an amount. And if I look at this estimated amount, it looks like at about 3 centimeters, we're at... 3 centimeters, x equals 3, the y is equal to 35 centimeters squared, and for the 12 centimeters, the y is equal also to about 35 centimeters squared. So how are they related? Well, that's that mirror image thing. They are the same thing. So apparently the dimensions for the length for 3 will get 35 centimeters and for the length for 12 we'd also get about 35 centimeters. So apparently there there is some sort of coexistence. And if I think about this, if I'm thinking about a rectangle that is maybe a 3 by 12, our area would be 36. So it's not just 35 that we have here, we probably have about 36 centimeters. So that's just a little bit of problem solving we can do. What are the dimensions of a rectangle with an area of 50 square centimeters? So if I were to look at the 50 line, I need to try to figure out some dimensions. So we have a cross there, and then if I were to keep going, we can see that there's a second cross here. So now we can go down and look at my x-axis and see that we have 10 and 5. So the dimensions of our rectangle with an area of 50 square centimeters is a 5 centimeter by 10 centimeter rectangle. Um, n last one, what is the fixed perimeter for the graph? If we have essentially a 50 or 5 by 10 centimeter situation, we have a rectangle that can be a 5 by 10. That means I have 5 centimeters here, 5 centimeters here, 10, and 10. So my fixed perimeter would be all of those numbers added up. So 5 plus 10 plus 5 plus 10, or 30 centimeters would be equal to the perimeter. Now let's move on and let's look at some tables. So here is a table that we have here. Actually, we're going to look at one table, not multiple. A rectangular swimming area, so it looks like we're at a swimming pool. What patterns do we observe in this table? Looking at this, I can say, well, here we have a 1 through 15, so we have a constant increase of 1 on the length or the x-axis, and our area, it looks like it goes 15, 28, 39, 48, 55, 60, 63, 64, 63. So here is my maximum. And that's where everything starts to flip-flop and mirror itself. So we have 63, 60, 55, 48, 39, 28, and 15. So there are some of my end points. So looking at this, I can essentially, if I wanted to, I could create like a little rainbow and I could connect the dots between the areas that are the same. And I'd see that we have a sweet little rainbow situation. How exciting. So first question, what is the fixed perimeter for the possible swimming areas? We kind of need to figure this out. One way that we can figure it out is we can look at these rainbow arcs that I'm making. Find the area that is the same in each of those rainbow arcs, and you get a corresponding dimension that goes along with that. If you look at them, they're two different dimensions. That means for this situation, if I were looking at this 15 that I've been drawing on, 
We have 15 square meters, and if I look over, we have 1 meter and 15 meters. That means there is a long, skinny rectangle for a swimming area. It's like a swimming lane that's 1 meter by 15 meters. So we can say the fixed perimeter is potentially all of these sides added up. So 1 plus 15 would be 16 plus another 1 we're 17 and 15. We're at 32 meters for our fixed perimeter. Next question. Suppose a lifeguard makes a rectangle with an area of 11.5 square meters. What are the, the dimensions of the rectangle? So when I see something like this, I want to sort of fit that 11.5 in here somewhere. So if we have 11.5, that means we have an area that is beyond our graph. We have an area that's 11.5 meters squared. So knowing that we have 11.5 as our area, we know that we're probably going to be dealing with, especially when we look at our dimensions that were the ones previous, a 1 by 15, we're going to be looking at a fractional area that adds to be 32 meters. So looking at this, we have 11.5 square meters, and I'm going to do a little bit of math off to the side because otherwise I'm not going to have enough room. Looking at this situation, we have essentially a skinny, skinny little rectangle. It's actually technically skinnier than this one, so or than the previous one. This is skinnier, even though it doesn't look like it. The area of this is 11.5 meters squared. Now, if I think about area, we have a width times a length. So we have area is equal to length times width. Another way that I could write that, instead of writing area, I could actually draw my or write my number in there. I have 11.5. So I have 11.5 is equal to the length times the width. Now, what we also know is our perimeter needs to add to be 32. Or if I wanted to, I could look at just half of my rectangle and say a length and a width, they need to add to half of 32 or 16. So half of our perimeter is 16 meters. So I could also say I have 16 is equal to the length plus a width. So I have two equations and I have two things I don't know. Now one way we can do this is just simply trying out some numbers. We so we could try out, we know we need to be beyond our edges of all of this, so we need to be trying out some fractional numbers. If we tried out 0.5, that would have to be 0.5 times, or for our length or something like that, we would have to do 0.5 times W would get me 11.5. And guys, we're not going to get an exact answer on this one because the numbers are so funky, but the whole concept is just to get used to multiplying, dividing, and finding various areas and also widths that work. So then we end up with 11.5 divided by 0.5 and we'd get 23. Now thinking about our perimeter equation, our width could not be 23 and our length or and our length could not be 0.5 and get us 16. 0.5 plus 23 is always going to be 23.5. So that's not going to work. So 0.5 is not our length. So this one is not going to work. But we could also try maybe 0.7, maybe up our length a little bit and try the width. If that was the case, we get 11.5 is equal to the width times 0.7. 11.5 divided by 0.7 is going to get me a width of 16.4. It's a little bit bigger than my perimeter that I need for a half of a perimeter. 16.4 plus 0.7 is going to get me 17.1. So I've gotten a little closer, which is really good. So this also doesn't work, but it's pretty close. We can also now try 7 point, or 0 0.75 for our length. And that is equal to 11.5. So now let's do that 11.5 divided by 0.75. And we end up with a width 
of 15.3 repeating. You add those numbers up and we're almost at 16. So I would say our length, or, or the dimensions of the rectangle are a length of about 0 0.75 and a width of about 15.3. So somewhere in that realm, we would be able to find a length and a width that would work. I'd imagine it could maybe even be 0.8 times 15.2. Nope, that one doesn't work. So looking at that, that's how you're going to sort of work it out. The next, la the next and last question that we have is, the lifeguards want to enclose the greatest possible area. What should the dimensions of the swimming area be? And what's nice about our table is we can actually find that situation. Our maximum area is on that table, and it is right here at 64. And we have one length that's listed there, which is 8. So the dimensions of that swimming area would be 64 as our area times 8 times the width. That means we're going to divide by 8. So we get 64 is equal to, or like, oops, not 64, but 8 is equal to our width. So our dimensions are an 8 meter by 8 meter swimming pool. Okay, so work yourself through this investigation. I hope this helps answer some questions you may have for investigation 1.2, and I will see you later. Bye.